Hey, 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 everybody. It is I Hope Giselle. And today I'm here to talk a little bit about Jonathan Majors. But more importantly, I want to talk about the idea of why black men can't do shit, right? Like, I'm not one to coddle the idea of black men behaving badly, but when black men are legitimately just out here trying to experience joy and happiness and live in their fullness and do things that don't put anybody at risk, including themselves, I have a huge issue and I take a huge issue with the fact that people want to find something and find an excuse for what they're doing to be a problem. So if you haven't lived under a rock for the last week or so, you've been seeing this beautiful cover of Jonathan Major and the images from this beautiful cover go viral. Now in this you know, a uh, editorial set of pictures. Jonathan is seen wearing pinks and red and pastels and all the things, and he's not in his usual form. Now we're used to seeing Jonathan Majors in this very hyper masculine mode. He's usually in this very like super, like, I don't really smile. You don't really know if I ever have fun. Do I have a soul? Do I not have a soul moment? And people eat that up, right? The idea that people don't have an issue with him portraying these images of people that probably look like some of our abusers in some cases is very telling because when this man is just having a moment of anime recreation joy and living his best life and showing off what it means to be loved and showing off a different side of himself that a lot of us have never ever seen now it's the problem now he's a part of the, 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 the agenda to emasculate black men. Now they're trying to take black men away from us. Now the idea of masculine black men in the home is the agenda that we're once again forgetting to talk about and discuss. And I call bullshit. I call bullshit on it all. Because at the end of the day, there are a couple of different nuances to why this is a problem and why some of y'all don't and can't and refuse to acknowledge that it's a problem. But I'm going to break it down for y'all. So first and foremost, let's talk about the colorism idea of this aesthetic, right? When we think about the aesthetic of Jonathan Majors versus the aesthetic of somebody like Luca Sabit, there is a very different reaction that we get from these two types of men. And I think that there is a reason for it. The light skin privilege is not just a privilege that you are given because society sees you as closer to white. But within the black community, and especially amongst black men, black women, amongst the black culture, we give people who are lighter skinned a pass at being softer and having more of a soft life. Right. And that does include our black men. When we're talking about black men, when we're having conversations around black men, when we see black men like Lenny Kravitz, when we see black men like Luca Sabat, when we see black men like Chris Brown, when we see black men like Shamar Moore, all of these people, genuine, like just different folks that are having a lighter skin tone, having moments where they play with their nail color, having moments where they play with their hair color, having moments where they just indulge in wearing more feminine colors and all of those different things and do different things and dress a different way. There's an exception that we make for those men and we call that hipster, right? We give those things different names and we say that those things are a little bit different and we love it. We love to see it. Chris Brown paint his nails and dye his hair pink and we just like, oh my God, that's that new sweat. Like, oh my God, nobody could do that the way Chris does that because that's that new sweat, right? But the second that a dark skinned black man wears a pink shirt, it's like, hold up. Pause, bro. What you doing with that? Why are we doing the pink shirt moment? I don't know if I like you with this moment. And it's just like, why? Right. So out of the outside of the fact that black men are often policed and can't do shit amongst the social culture of who we are and, and how we show up as a culture and a community. Dark skinned black men really can't do shit, right? Because the idea of being dark skinned means that you have to fall into the stereotype that gets a lot of black men killed every single day by way of the stereotype, right? And what people think about darker skinned people in general, but let alone black men. So the same stigmas and stereotypes that are the reason that black men get killed are the same ones that we want them to uphold on a daily basis within community in order for us to validate or respect their masculinity. And that to me is trash. What I see when I see this Jonathan Majors cover is a man who finally got a chance to take a break 
from being this person, to take a break from always being the mean guy, to take a break from always being the person that doesn't smile, to take a break from being the person that's always fucking angry. Now, I know that we've seen this in other instances with other actors of different races, but like, what, what does it mean when you have to constantly play these roles? We saw it with Heath Ledger. We see it with Robin Williams. Like, we've seen this so many other times where when this person is inundated with this entire, like, I gotta play this role 24 7, 24 hours a day of my life, even when I'm not on screen, that the consequences could be detrimental. And so when I see this black man just trying to have a moment of clarity for himself and just enjoying life and enjoying all of the success that he's having as he fucking should. Now we have people turning around and trying to say that the agenda has gotten to him and that, you know, the idea of, of masculine men in the home is a problem. When if we had seen Chris Brown or if we had seen Lucas Saba or if we had seen Lenny Kravitz or if we had seen Maxwell or any of our little light skinned racially ambiguous faves do this, we would have been like, oh my God, yes, oh my goodness, like look at Lenny, it's giving, it's always been giving, love the aesthetic on him. But for some reason, if we put a Tyrese, if we put a Jonathan Majors, if we put a, a, a Joe, if we put any of our dark skin faves up in something like this, y'all would have a problem and y'all do have a problem and that becomes the emasculation of black men. But what I want y'all to also pay attention to is the fact that y'all don't have this same smoke and y'all don't have that same energy for for men who are lighter skin and I wonder why are y'all saying that those men are also not black and I know that some of y'all are going to think that I'm a reach but the girls that get it will get it because some of y'all are going to miss that and some of you light skin men miss that every single time because what they low key saying is that they expect it from you not a good thing okay not this back bitch to is that one. shaking the table <laughs> What a lot of the culture is saying is that we expect you to be less masculine. We expect you to be feminine. We expect you to paint your nails and do your hair all different kinds of colors. But these dark skinned kings over here, these true black men, we don't expect that from them. And that in and of itself is a colorist fucking problem that we still have yet to tackle within our own community. Because why the fuck does everybody have grace and why does everybody get to do what they want to do and move how they want to move and experience joy, sexual joy, relationship joy, job joy, joy joy in general just for waking up and being happy that you woke the fuck up except black men and specifically black men who are dark skinned it does not make any sense but moving right along to the next portion of this shit that's a problem it's the fact that so many of us women myself included, are out here talking about how we want men to be more sensitive and open up and do the things and be this person and be that person. We want them to, you know, really step into this space where they can learn to understand what it means to not just be this one linear person with this one linear thought process, but every single time a black man comes out of his shell and tries to do something different and show you that he can think beyond that process, it's always usually us at the front of the line with something negative and nasty to say. Oh, here they go. Oh, I could never couldn't be my man I see the agenda got him blah 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 and it's just like as women what the fuck do we want as black women what exactly do we want from these black men and to those of you all who are going to be in the comments who have been here before who know who I am and for those of y'all who didn't know I'm a black transgender woman and let me just say that the black trans girls ain't no better on this topic than the black cisgender women so hold all of your negative comments and all of your bullshit to the end of the video because that ain't what we're here to talk about what we're here to talk about is the ways in which women in general period whether it be trans transgender cisgender bi whatever the fuck the case may be do not give the same grace to black men as we do to every fucking body else while also asking these motherfuckers to be more sensitive and to be more open and to be more um, uh, progressive in their thought process. Well, the first way that they learn to be progressive in their thought process for other people is learning to have that same empathy and sympathy and grace for themselves. If we don't allow these men to experiment with themselves, how the fuck do we expect them to go out into the world and treat a gay person, a trans person, a woman, cisgender or transgender correctly if we don't allow them to even indulge and what it means to treat themselves like the person that they want to see. They can't even look at themselves in the mirror and be in love with that, but we want them to come out here and show us grace and give us love and give us the opportunity to see them for who they really are. It does not work that way. 
It does not work that way. And I'm sick and tired of giving grace and pretending like we're not the problem because sometimes, ladies, we are. We are the main motherfucking problem. We are the character motherfucking work. We are the, the we, we're, we're all of the fucking things at the same time. We are the plateau. We are the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, the apex of the story, all of those things. And if we turn around and act like we had nothing to do with it, we had everything to do with it. And we've got to stop. We can't ask black men to be leaders of the home in a very specific way that shows empathy and sympathy and care and all of these other things. But every single time we see a black man trying to tap into those things, now you're no longer dateable. Now you're no longer husband material. Now you're no longer any of these things. And that shit just doesn't make fucking sense. We got to make up our minds about what it means for somebody to be able to show up and still be a man while exploring exactly who the fuck he is. I think that that's really interesting to me too because it brings me into my next point when it talks about the ways in which that like we as women and, and, and what we see as sexy. Because a lot of these people are gonna say, well, way back in the day, in my day, X, Y, and Z, the men didn't have that, the men didn't do that, the men weren't on that. Girl, goodbye, hallelujah, and thank you for bringing it up because I have several examples. When we talk about the Isley Brothers, when we talk about Prince, when we talk about Michael Jackson, when we talk about Rick James, when we talk about Lil Richard, when we talk about all of these old school groups, the OJs and all of these people that walked around here and tight ass bell bottoms with dick bulges from here to fucking Cancun. Nobody said anything about that and there were sex symbols and sex sirens until this day. First of all, we all love Mr. Big and know Mr. Big to be one of the, 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 the realest gangsters in the, in, the, in the industry, okay? You don't mess with Mr. Biggs, okay? Hey there, Mr. Big. How you doing, Mr. Big? And Mr. Big used to dress like one of those basketball players on and off the court. So make it, please make it make sense to me how the hoochie daddy shorts used to be the norm and now they're a joke for everybody. Please make it make sense to me how bell bottoms and tight pants used to be the norm and now they're a joke for everybody. Now they're a symbol that you don't exude masculinity in the way that you're supposed to. But back in my day, that would have never happened. Back in your day, it was happening, honey bunch. And I'm sure that because they got a little bit more of a bird's eye view on the things, a lot more stuff was happening in those game nights with the bros that don't, that don't even happen these days because you ain't got, it's a little bit more left up to the imagination these days. But back in the day, 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 child, you could walk in the room and see what everybody was thinking. So you had your pick of the litter if you wanted to try something. I mean, <laughs> like, come on. There, there's something that's very, um, there's something that's internally fucked up with us. And there's a cognitive dis dissonance that we don't have for our own sets and ideals of culture and what it meant to be masculine and what it meant to show up and what it meant to be your own person. People used to respect individuality. People respected Prince for the fact that he was different. People respected him for the fact that he was this tiny little man with this sexy voice, this deep sexy voice, and he did what the fuck he wanted to do. If Prince wanted to get up there and assless chaps with all of his motherfucking pubic hair hanging out the side of it, that's what the fuck he did. And he went down in history as one of the greatest male sex symbols in the world, okay? So let's not act as if this was not something that people found to be attractive. Let's talk about the idea that there are the, there's a group of people that want to believe that black men are going extinct. There's a group of people that want to believe that toxicity is going extinct. There's a group of people that want to believe that the more accepting we are of black men who do what the fuck they want, regardless of whoever the fuck got a problem with it, that we are going to lose this race war, right? Because all of our black kings will be too feminized to fight. And the one thing that I have to tell y'all is I ain't never seen a man more resilient or ready to go at it with a bitch than a black queer man, okay? I ain't never seen a motherfucker more ready to go at it with a bitch than a black gay man. A black gay man is always ready to throw them hands. A black gay man is always ready to stand up for himself because honestly, that's what they grow up having to do. That is what they grow up having to understand is that at any moment, any one of these people in here could lack the trust and the ability to see you as a human being and so you better be ready at all times. But we don't talk about that amongst each other. We go around here 
putting our own, uh, we put our own limitations on these other people based off of what we know to be true about ourselves and what we think we can handle. And that has nothing to do with these other folks. Jonathan being on this cover and being in this cover and his black boy joy and smiling and touching his lips and doing all of the things is nothing more than a representation of him being a true man that understands that when you know exactly who you are, the idea of having to prove that to somebody else by wearing clothing, by saying certain words, by always appearing to be upset and mad, is not the way that you continue to get the respect that you've gotten. You being who you are and saying and showing up for who the fuck that is, no matter how it makes other people feel, is what makes you a real man in my book. You being able to sit on that motherfucking couch and do you and read the backlash that you're getting and still collect your bag and not feel the need to respond and not feel the need to have to explain to somebody, that to me is internal masculinity. That masculinity comes from a place where I don't have to be fucking 50,000 bitches to prove to you all. I don't have to be out here talking about all of the women that I'm taking back to my hotel room. I don't have to be out here with a stone cold face every single day to prove to you all that I'm a man because I'm a man because I said that I was and no matter what color I wear no matter how my hair is cut no matter if I get my nails painted or not I am still that person and I think that if we took more time to respect the decision that Jonathan Majors made rather than dissect it as a move or an agenda from these white people we would be in a better place as human beings and I think that black men would be in a better place emotionally and mentally because they would know that no matter what they did and how they show up we still respect them as the black men that they are. And quiet as it's kept, maybe if you allow more black men to be soft, you will have black men that understood how to be soft for their women and less black women that feel the need to be overly masculine because of it. But y'all ain't ready to talk about that. But I digress. When we talk about the, the entirety of what it means to like stand in that, right? Uh, the last thing that I want to talk through and talk about is this Rihanna and ASAP Rocky moment. This cover is a couple of different things, but let me, let me tell y'all what this cover is. This cover is about Rihanna. This cover is not about ASAP Rocky. This cover is not about any of his accomplishments. This cover ain't about him. This cover is about Rihanna. It's about her rebirth. It's about her having a baby. It's real interesting how black men be real ready to tell everybody else that they're taking up space from black women until it's one of them. It's real interesting how I as a black trans woman can't even be a part of a conversation about blackness in general at all and speak on and speak to myself as a black woman because I'm taking up space from real black women. But y'all want ASAP to be at the front row center of this picture as if this is about him. No, if he were at the front row center of that picture, he would be taking up space from a black woman because this ain't his moment. This is her moment. And if you want to be honest about it, just because she's leading this picture does not mean that she leads their, ha their household. But if we want to be real about it, um, pop goes the billionaire, bitch. She does lead that fucking household. Because if people forget about who the fuck he was today, tomorrow, or the day after that, that billionaire money is still going to hold them over. So at the end of the day, it's not just about the fact that she makes more money than him, but it's about the fact that if we really thinking about the head of the household, it, we got to come down off of these ideas that only make men can leave the household because only men are supposed to bring home the bacon and then also accusing men of being less than if they don't bring home a certain amount of bacon. This picture was not that. It was a beautiful picture that showcased this woman who attained all of these amazing things while still being able to be this global fucking superstar. And we don't see that happen often and in a successful way. It showcases the fact that this father is actually in the life of his son, where we get to see him hugging on his baby and kissing on his baby in a way that we would normally see the mom having to do while the dad is in the front doing God knows what and having God knows the, the best time of his life. We see this woman striving towards the goals that she knows that she's going to have to meet to make sure that she can be a part of that. And I think that y'all are missing the moment. Then y'all have this breakdown of their, you know, all of this bullshit. And one of the things says strong face. What's really interesting to me is that the men that are sharing this are some of the very same men that will share other pictures of Rihanna and say, I want to fuck that. So if y'all want to fuck that and you also agree with the fact that she has this strong face, are you also saying that you're attracted to trans women because we have these strong faces supposedly according to y'all by y'all plan. Y'all said, it, I didn't say it. Y'all 
said it. I didn't say it. Y'all said it. I didn't say it because that's what y'all say about us. So at the end of the day, if y'all are agreeing with Rihanna having this strong face and this masculine energy, but you posted two years ago that you wanted to fuck her and the day before the Super Bowl, you wanted to fuck her then and the day before you saw this cover, you still wanted to fuck her and now she, all of a sudden she looked like a man. I don't understand that. Make it make sense to me, right? Like it just doesn't make sense to me. And y'all will grasp at all of the straws in order to make it appear like you are are the heads of the household in this very superficial bullshit ass way at the end of the day it doesn't matter who makes the most money who's the who's at the front of the pictures what matters is when we go home can we navigate this thing called life in a way that is that that, that is um tangible and important for the both of us. If that means that my husband stays home and he does the cooking and the cleaning and all of those things because I'm not a cooking, cleaning ass bitch, that is what works for us. And the head of the household is the person that makes sure that the household is functioning. So if I can't function to save my life, but my husband knows that when I get home that this needs to be over here, the books have to be read by this time, the baby has to be put down by this time, he is still the head of this motherfucking household regardless of how much money I bring in here because without him, this household don't work. And my thing is some of you all fail to realize that bringing home the bacon ain't enough for a lot of people any motherfucking way because at the end of the day you can bring home all that bacon and use that bacon as an excuse to go get another motherfucking pig to cut from because you bring home the bacon and that's not enough anymore we've got to let go of these ideals that in order to be seen as a real man your woman has to constantly and always and forever be behind you and suck your dick from the back three times a day because that is just unrealistic it is unrealistic to expect us to live like we're in the 1950s when we're in 2023 and half of y'all don't even have y'all own car, let alone your own motherfucking space to be talking about running a home to begin with. And this is not a put down. This is just an honest fucking assessment of the way that we out here living. A lot of the people that are complaining about being the head of the household has no fucking house to hold, let alone anybody to head because nobody wants to be bothered with you because of your fucked up ass ideals when it comes down to women, relationships, and cohabitating. Y'all have got to stop it. Leave Jonathan alone. Leave Rihanna alone. Leave men who just want to be out here doing their things alone and stop holding dark skinned black men to a different standard that you hold everybody else to because it's simply unfair and honestly a lot of y'all are going to crack under the pressure and you have no one to blame but yourself because you are allowing these folks to make you feel like you're less than simply because your skin is darker and they believe that you should have an entirely different demeanor about yourself based on that and that alone and that's nobody's problem but your own those are my thoughts. That's my two cents. Hated to love it, but the underdog said what the fuck she said. And y'all let me know in the comments how y'all feel about it. Do you agree with what I said? Do you think that I'm pushing the envelope? Do you think I should just shut up because I'm trans and I have no, I'm not black now because I'm trans. And so I shouldn't be talking about none of this because I'm not black. You know, because y'all know y'all love to forget that trans people black because we trans. So somehow, some way that makes us not black no more. I don't know how it makes me not black no more, but apparently I'm not black no more once I'm trans. So, you know, let me know in the comments below respectfully how you feel about my opinion. And if you agree, like, let, let, let's have some, some dialogue about this entire thing, because I think that it's important that we move the needle way far away from this bullshit ass argument that we've been having for the last couple of years and into a space where we can really talk about what it means to be people who are not only accepting, but people who are seeking to be progressive in more ways than one. And that doesn't mean just socially against white people or other you know, people or brown people or whatever the case may be. It means being able to do so within our own community and sweeping around our own front door first and doing so like with, with the intention to actually be supportive. With that said, like I say this time and every time, y'all, peace, love, and hope, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye, everybody.